Hi guys, so it's Gavin, it's good to go paddle boarding. Um, we're down at Ballyrunner Marina today. Um, I don't have any bookings this morning, so what I thought we'd do is go through just my process of staying safe whenever the wind is maybe cross shore. Um, it's not crazy strength or anything like that today, but you know, there's things you've got to observe. What speed is the wind would be one thing, you know. The strength of the wind is very important. You need to know that you, you would really struggle to paddle against the wind. And any really, any sort of paddle board. Now today I'm obviously going to be on a touring board. And just because the weather isn't awesome, there's heavy showers. It's nice and sunny in this direction. But there's been loads of heavy showers right across the lot all morning. So, um, you know, I'm looking and I'm watching the day and I'm seeing where I'm going to get a window for paddling. Um, not just watching the forecast, but watching the sky. That's what I talk about. Something that I learned from being at sea for a long time. And you can get windows of opportunity. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, I'm going to go and put a few strokes in, enjoy myself, keep myself in a place where there's a wind shadow, um, which means that if the wind is slightly stronger offshore, you, you pick an area where there's maybe trees or high banking or... Um, you know, like, I guess by the sea it could be cliffs, but you've got to know what you're doing. You've got to know um, your area, you've got to know the windage, you've got to know their tides, you've got to know, um, you know, what the, the, under the water, you know, when the, what the bottom's like, you know, sandy, rocky, and, and so on and so forth. So, listen, I'm going to keep updating small videos, and hopefully you'll see that you can still get a paddle in if you're with the right person. Whether that's a school, an instructor, doesn't have to be me, just somebody who's competent, who knows what they're doing. But of course I'm going to recommend my school. Um, and uh, you know what, if you enjoy this and you like this, then let me know and I will put some more content up like this. The other thing is communication. So I'm holding my phone, which is my primary method of communication, but you'll also see I'm wearing a wee handheld radio. I appreciate not everybody will have one, but it's definitely good to have more than one method of communicating whenever you're on the water. Um, especially having someone on shore who's sort of ready and knows where you're paddling, you know, knows your competency and won't be freaking out if you're an extra half hour, you know. Tell them um, your standby on, on land, just to how long you expect to be paddling and allow yourself a little bit of room for moving. You don't have to be entirely accurate. Again, I felt I kind of would say, right, so today, it's not always bright sunshine, there's rain, right? And I'm wearing these here. That's not because it's an awesome sunny day. I'm wearing these here because I just like keeping the wind out of my eyes. The last thing you want to be doing is paddling and being uncomfortable. So whenever you're paddling, be as comfortable as possible. Wear a hat, keep the sun off your head, or any UV that might be popping through. And if you need to wear a wee pair of light shaded glasses, not for the, the tremendous sunshine, but maybe just because you don't want your eyes streaming with water, we're looking at, you know, that sort of 12 knot wind in my face because I'm going to choose to paddle into the wind, which means at any point, if I need to come back to the marina whenever I leave, I've got the wind at my back. I'm not going to be exhausted trying to paddle, or yeah, paddle into the wind, exerting all my energy and have nothing left for the trip home. So, again, I'm going to show you, nice and settled in the marina. See the tree? And already in the marina, you can see the water the, the surface is not just perfectly tempered, you can see that ripple, and outside the marina it'll be a little bit choppy, but it's not going to be horrific. There are loads of opportunities to paddle on days where it is windy, it's just about wisdom. Knowing your limits, reading the weather, choosing your kit wisely, and being prepared. So, speak soon. Okay, just in the mouth of the marina, you can evidently hear the wind blowing. The surface isn't terrible, it's just a little bit of wind, right? So it's not horrific, it's not terrible. It's already blown me, you can see how quickly I'm being moved by the water. And the wind. And uh, yeah, as I said, we're going to go out, we're going to exercise some wind. So I'm going to turn around here, if I can manage this. Yeah, nice and gently. You see the trees in the background. The wind is blowing from land across toward where I'm standing right now. It's kind of cross offshore, I would call it. And we're going to use the trees as a wind shadow. 
and if you notice in the distance there is a field with no trees there and you'll notice that whenever I paddle that way there will be a little bit more resistance but I'll paddle over there and I'll catch up with you and show you what I'm talking about. Here I am and close to the trees and the breeze is back down to exactly what it was like in the marina because I'm using the geography around me to protect me as I paddle. I'm still in three feet of water and I see if depth to paddle, if I fall, I can stand, if I need to walk to shore, I can walk to shore, and I still have all of this epic distance to paddle, get my exercise in, free up my mind from whatever might be going on on the inside, and just enjoy something, you know what I mean, you just get out and you enjoy something. Um, like today I'm obviously by myself, but socially too, I was on the phone this morning actually with a friend, and just reminding them, you know what, I'm here, I'm going to go for a paddle, let's make it happen. That's the awesome thing about paddle boards, it is very social. And even though um, conditions are not always perfect, there are opportunities, you know. So be in touch with your schools, be in touch with your instructors, talk to the lifeguards at a beach, get the advice that you need, and get out there and enjoy yourselves, folks. I'm going to put in some strokes, try and make my way across to the far side of the bay, using the wind shadow as I've said and create an opportunity for me to get out onto the water and enjoy myself um, so again speak so love that bit of patter sound on the water it's actually calmed out nicely here real nice sun's in the sky put a wee bit of pace on there or something yeah. <laughs> Some crack. I love paddle. I love paddle boarding. I love the light on the water. I love the light on the board. Like fireball up in the sky. That guy's is hard to beat. So it is. That's why I said it for so long. It really is good to go paddle boarding, and it's not just because I called my business that. Genuinely, it's a sport to love and enjoy. So I hope. Uh, Something to remember to you whenever you're whenever you're out in the water and you stop. Like you can move quite quick. It's hard to tell, maybe. But I'm moving it. I'd say I'm moving probably two or three knots here. Just because I stopped paddling. Um, and again, you, you know you can rest, you can have a break. If you need to drop to your knees, you drop to your knees, that's the safe thing to do. You need to prone paddle and prone paddle. But slow and steady paddling with good technique is the key distance I believe and just enjoying your time that wee snapshot there for free so you hear the noise now and I'm slightly more sheltered here so I'm going to give you an idea of what a wind shadow is like the wind here is being is open but it's also funneling through the trees on the right side and the left side which means there's a good chance that the wind speed increases in this little area just because there's no bar in, right? Now, let me take my little sink because I'm trying to do it with one hand. But if I hear the wind there now, so it's a wee bit gusty. But it's not, it's, what would I say? I'd say maybe up to, maybe 13 to 15 knots. Just because we have this scenario, there's a funneling effect of the wind on the other side, but all the rushes in front of us, I paddle, nice and easy up, we're going to drop out of the wind, you can still hear the bull rushes flailing, that's just the nature of that, there we go, now, slightly shallow, we're going to just three feet, we're going to two feet of water here, now, this is me using a wind shadow. I don't have to paddle at all. Because the wind's not catching me. The wind's above my head, above those rushes. And when I paddle out to the right here, you're going to see just how quickly or how much more wind there is funneling. And 
then as I paddle across this little gap, this is where the field was by the way, you'll see the field in a second, but if I paddle forward here, it's a little shallow, you know, the lake. But the wind is already if I'm out on a normal paddle, but it was grip. The wind is slightly more windy. Because of a funneling effect like that is, I encourage everyone just to get their tandems up, which is the stroke rate. Paddle through the wind, use a term called berry gliding, uh, which comes from the kayaking world, and you sort of diagonally face into the wind, and paddle straight across, uh, which is easier seen in person than it is explained. But, as I come through the wind shadow, or through the area where the wind's funneling into another wind shadow, it drops off. But over in that corner, there's flat, flat down. The wind's not touching it. So I'm going to paddle along that edge. Conditions, just look at that. Look at that. Perfect. You can see in the distance over by Anton, there's uh, showers of rain. Some heavy cloud here, but it's nice and sunny. Just a little bit in between. Water again, we're down to, we're up to three feet of water, and it's evenly spaced here actually because the loch level is probably down a meter and a half, slightly more. There's a little sandbar over here I'm going to go to. It's like a little desert island in the summertime, if we can just see it right there. And that's the great thing about the loch. Those little stop offs, the sand's always firm. Um, it's not too much, what I would call quick sand, I guess. Um, I'm not paddling, the breeze is carrying me towards the sandbar, but I'm still well within the wind shadow of the trees. <coughs> I'm just loving life. Loving life out here where it's beautiful, you get to breathe the fresh air. Doing something that's less it's gentle. Should have brought my wee hat with the neck covering, but we'll, uh, we'll just press on, right? Because I'm trying to show you the wee sandbars and stuff. This is something that's a wisdom to do. Whenever you get out of um, you know deeper water, don't put yourself at risk. Just get off the board and try it a little bit. And whenever you're on in deeper water, then pop the board back down again. As so, that Astron Europe is a beautiful thing, hey? beautiful. <coughs> Back on the board, don't be scared. This is a great wee spot for, <laughs> notice how I got back on there and just broke straight into the conversation. Um, this is a great wee spot, you know, for, for people who want to get out and explore a wee bit with an instructor, with somebody who's competent and knows the area. You want to paddle a wee bit further? This could be for an, a beginner, maybe a couple of hours paddling, but it's safe. I call this the playpen because it's safe depth of water. You've got a mixture of um, deep and shallow. You have little sandbars that you can stop on, you can launch on like this, have a bit of like it. Where else do you get it? You don't get this at the beach. In your inland waterways. Oh, that's lovely too, hey, I love it. It's not just about. It's still nice, it's lovely. Sand, sandbar. I think we're in Jurassic yeah. Park. Birds have been on here and they've tabbered out all of the, the signature. Well, there's a bloody big footprint there now. That is just to give you reference, there's my hand. That's big. 
right? Like, uh, and there was the Mavie, if you put your board on the side and the B side, the one's pushing against the sand. Or you bring a stick and you put it in and you attach your leash to the stick. Uh, whenever I'm on that, leashes, 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 leashes. Everybody wants to talk about leashes. So today, I'm on my own. I have a cold leash. It's a knee, or sorry, it is a, yeah, a knee leash, nice and wide, but as you can see, I'm wearing my Panda quick release belt because it will be worn around my waist. As I said, I'm on my own, so I want to be as safe as I possibly can. says what it uh, does what it says in the pen it will save your life um, that's enough for me uh, I was talking about the quick release belt there a moment, a moment ago so not in my flatness but this is what we're talking about a little toggle on a belt and if you look around the back see the leash and the wonderful awesome <laughs> back in um, the board is connected to me by the coiled leash which is Actually, um, I went with a, it's like a big wave leash, I guess, um, coiled, but it has a pin in it. So if I need a quick release and I can't get it from the front, I can show you. See the yellow? It's that, I mean, the things that you miss, or can miss when you're paddleboarding, you know, if you just don't take a wee minute or two to go around the corner, find a wee spot, a wee moment of tranquility. You talk about mindfulness, the amount of times that I have stopped on a paddleboard to just be in the moment, to just enjoy the presence of where I'm at and what's going on around me. And it might be nothing, just a breeze. But those 10, 15 minutes of, of doing that, just clear the head. Clear the flipping head, boys. And girls. It's a, it's a lovely place to be when you know when you know your environment and you know what there is out here to enjoy. Getting out with the right people or the right person is where it's at. Absolutely where it's at.
calmer than a calm thing, huh? And if you don't go, you don't know. And that's that. Come the distance that I wanted to come. I'm on the other side of the bay. I've enjoyed it. There's very little wind here. There will be when we go back across the bay, but we keep ourselves a safe distance from the, the trees in a wind shadow. And you can have the most awesome days paddling, guys. Stay safe, keep supping. This is Gavin from Good to Go Paddleboarding. Out.